If there's a single game that I could attribute to getting me into strategy or tactical RPGs, the answer is simple, it's Shining Force 2. While I did play Shining Force 1 first, 2 is the game that got me to fall in love. Compared to later entries in the genre, it's a super simple game, but so full of charm that it doesn't matter in the slightest. I love the character design, the story, and even the mostly easy yet satisfying battle system. There are a few nasty battles here and there, but all in all this game has a smooth gameplay loop that just keeps giving. We're going a little different in this episode though. Because of simplicity, we're going to dive into not one, not two, but three characters from Shining Force 2. Without further ado, I'm Terror Squirrel, and this is Who the Heck Are, Bowie, Sarah, and Chester. Backstory. Bowie, or whatever you want to name him, is a kid from the city of Grandsale. He's reportedly the son of a legendary hero, but it's never named exactly who his father is. Some say it's Max of Shining Force 1, others say it's Ian of Shining Force Gaiden Final Conflict. Either way, he is the main character of the story who is always part of your band of heroes. Bowie is, alas, a silent protagonist, the likes of which I'm sure we'll see time and time again in this series. Sarah is an elf child, also living in the city of Grand Seal. Unfortunately, there's little spoken about her actual past or any living dead relatives in the game. Chester is similar to Sarah in that he seems to be the only one of his kind, a centaur, in the entire city. Once again, nothing is let on about any possible family he has in Grand Seal or elsewhere. These three are classmates under the tutelage of Sir Astral, one day when Sir Astral's presence was required at the castle. The three students followed after him, against his wishes, but he found out that the king got sick under mysterious pretenses. The four of them then went to the ancient tower to investigate and were accosted by several gizmos. This is the beginning of the Shining Force. In combat, Bowie happens to be a traditional sword-wielding main character, as oh so many are. He starts off with a simple attack plus three wooden sword. Nothing to write home about for sure. Unlike so many other RPGs though, there's nothing else to equip besides weapons until some special rings are found. This guy here starts off as the swordsman class and is eventually able to promote to an obviously older hero class where he can equip past the first six swords, capping out with the four sword or the cursed dark sword. He deals pretty decent damage throughout the game, but isn't the best or worst at anything. Another well-rounded fellow. Sarah is a typical staff-wielding healer with a focus on, you guessed it, healing. She's able to do some decent damage down the line, but definitely not right away. She begins the game with an attack plus three wooden rod. It might be the same attack as Bowie's sword, but don't expect too much as the game goes on. Sarah starts off as a priest class and has the privilege of promoting to one of two classes. Her normal promotion route will take her to the path of Vicar, an upgraded version of the priest. With the Vicar Ball item, she can be promoted to the healing and dealing master monk class, able to equip hand-to-hand -hand weapons. The Vicar caps out at the Mystery Staff and Cursed Demon Rod, while the Master Monk caps out at the Giant Knuckles and Cursed Evil Knuckles. Personally, I prefer the latter Master Monk for all my face-kicking needs. My boy Chester is a lancing and spearing damage dealer. I like that he and others like him get the ability to equip two types of weapons, one for two range damage and one for one range damage. You'll always step up in attack power when you get the next one though. Carry both with you for ensuring you've got the right tool for the job. He starts off with an attack plus three wooden stick, a base level lance. I'm noticing a pattern with the materials making up these weapons. Anywho, Chester is a knight class who, ha who ha also has the ability to promote it to two different paths. First off, we've got the Paladin, which is a straight up upgrade of the knight. Then we've got the Pegasus Knight by using the Pegasus Wing, which turns Chester into an epic flying spear throwing damage boss. Why wouldn't you just go straight Pegasus? Well, it's a long while before you get the Pegasus Wing, so he's a little gimpy until then. Abilities. Let's get this one out of the way quickly. Chester has no abilities besides Pokey Pokes. He stabs and stops stabbing. That's it. For the spells I'm going to mention though, I'll say the total level the character must be in order to use it. So if I say 36, that would be 36 unpromoted or 16 after the level 20 promotion. Bowie, our sorty boy, starts off with the Egress spell. Not much to show off with this one. It simply removes the force from the battle and returns them to a nearby town. Though, at level 22, Bolt 1 becomes usable, which is a decently high damaging spell, especially at higher ranks. Subsequent levels of Bolt come at levels 31, 42, and 51. Sarah's definitely got more to her repertoire th here than the others, and she should, because she's a caster. She starts off with Heal Rank 1, which is your average run-of-the-mill healing spell. This is actually her greatest strength because every time she casts this, she gets a roughly 10 experience, making her easily level to 99 through just casting Heal 1. She gets new ranks of heal at 7, 22, and 40. Next is Detox, which cures poison, paralysis, and other status effects. This is first obtained at level 4, then upgraded at 13, 33, and 45. Next up, Blast. Blast is a wind spell that causes some damage to the targeted enemies. This comes at level 10, 16, 25, and 36. 
Finally, we have Slow, which decreases the enemy's agility and defense. This only has two levels, first learned at 19, then upgraded at 29. Stats. Let's take a look at Bowie's stats. Initially, he's set up like so. 12 HP, 8 MP, which is just enough to cast Egress, 9 attack, 4 defense, 4 agility, and 6 movement. As expected, he gets much better gains on almost everything post-promotion. There's a short period around 10 or 15 where his agility flatlines, but it spikes shortly after that. And defense? Oh man, that skyrockets after promotion. For Sarah, we're looking at 11 HP, 10 MP, 9 attack, 5 defense, 5 agility, and 5 move. She doesn't necessarily shoot up in any particular stat, but she does have really nice HP gains after being promoted. She's got a bit of a flatline in MP uh, pre-promotion, but you level up fast enough early on that, should be, that shouldn't prove to be anything but a nuisance. Finally, the Chestinator. 11 HP, 0 big fat magic points, 8 attack, 5 defense, 7 agility, and 7 movement. Chester has some sweet HP gains through the latter half of pre-promotion, as well as post. He gets some really decent defense skills as well. Agility is nothing to laugh at either. His attack though, he kind of lacks here for most of the game. So you might want to replace him deeper into the game with a better knight. In headquarters, each character has their own flavor quote. Here's Sarah's. Remember, you're our leader. We lose when you are defeated, okay? And here's Chester's. Winnie. Oh, I love going into battle. I'm assuming the Winnie in Chester's just means the horse noise. Uh, that's all I can guess. But hey, that's it. Uh, yeah, it's a Genesis game, so there's no branching dialogue or super heavy lore attached to the game, so we're a little low on fun facts and quotables for this one. But that's going to be it for my overviews of Bowie, Sarah, and Chester. I'm planning on recording my entire playthrough of this game, so along with that, we'll eventually get more Shining Force 2 character clusters like this one. I want to thank you quickly for stopping by and checking out the video, and remind you that if you enjoyed it, subs and likes are greatly appreciated. Don't forget to check out more videos from the Who the Heck Is series while you're here. Drop a comment if you want to discuss, comment, or rage at me, and it's all good. Thanks for watching. Bye.